Well, here we are. The bracket. It's out. And let me tell you, I am pretty interested in seeing how this all goes down this year. 2023 March Madness. We waited all this time from November all the way to now, and we've made it to the bracket. Now, I do have some issues with this bracket, um, at least for the men's side. I'm going to go over to, to the women's side in a little bit. Um, but when you look at, let's start with the South region first. Of course, Alabama, the number one overall seed, well deserved, you know, one of the best records in the country. Really, really good stuff from them. You know, it's going to either be uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi or Southeast Missouri State taking them on. But honestly, it's Alabama, Brandon Miller and company with Nate Oates coaching. Should be an easy one there. So we're just going to pick Alabama here to go on to the round of 32. Maryland, West Virginia. Interesting 8-9 matchup here. Uh you know, Maryland was in turmoil for a couple of years. Then they were able to get back up, get got back to the tournament now this year. Everything like that. They're going to be taking on Bob Huggins in West Virginia. Um, now, again, I said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, that we were going to get at, we were going to get at least seven big big twelve teams in the tournament, regardless of what happens. And West Virginia just happened to be the last. Of those teams that got in. Oklahoma State did not get in, by the way. Um, this one's going to be a real, real fun one. You know, both these teams got some interesting things going on about them, but I'm going to pick gonna pick West Virginia here over Maryland. San Diego State, Charleston. Charleston, a 31 team, won the CAA. Erased all doubts about, you know, potential at large and whatnot. San Diego State won the Mountain West. Uh, five twelve matchups are always the funnest because you're in the, they're kind of unpredictable at times. But I think we're going to go with the 12 here. We are going to go with Charleston. I like San Diego State, but, I mean, I think Charleston wants to prove themselves. You know, Virginia Furman, basically these two teams play the same kind of boring, lame annoying basketball there is very slow very defensive and it's just like you never know what comes out of here but i'm gonna pick virginia to come out of here then when you go to the bottom half of the south region you got creighton nc state baylor uc santa barbara i think it's uc santa barbara Missouri, Utah State, and Arizona, and Princeton. Now, Arizona, two seed, really interesting two seed there. Baylor, three seed, pretty much where they should be. Creighton, a six. Creighton kind of fell off a little bit. Again, we were hyping. I think everybody was hyping Creighton up at the beginning of the season, and they kind of fell off a little bit. But Arizona won the Pac-12 tournament. And I think this is an this is a Arizona team that can go pretty far. Missouri, Utah State, kind of an interesting 7-10 matchup. Missouri started off real strong, kind of faded a little bit, then came back and became a little bit stronger again. I'm gonna, this is a toss-up, a 7-10 matchup like this one. Definitely a toss-up. Definitely going to go with Utah State, however. <laughs> Utah State. They got some shooters out there. Um, you know, the Baylor should be easy there. NC State really shouldn't even be in at all. And this is this is one of the first major issues I have with the bracket, NC State's inclusion. Again, the ACC was really, really weak this year. And it's there's really not a lot of justification. For NC State being in, especially with the resumes of teams like Rutgers, teams like Oklahoma State, uh, those were the two major ones 
that got left out. I do not care about North Carolina. In fact, they declined and said, we ain't going to the NIT either. So good for them. Clemson as well, you know, that was a back and forth debate. You know, Clemson and NC State. So I'm picking Creighton out of here. That, that's pretty easy. Um, going to the bottom to the east bracket now, Purdue is the number one over here on this side of the bracket. Again, don't particularly know why, you know, like I believe that that last number one for some reason, which is absolutely asinine, you know, certainly that last, again, I, I, had, I have issues with the bracket, you know, itself. You know, again, we talked about the teams that got left out. You know, Clemson kind of, you know, in an and position. North Carolina shouldn't have been in at all. Uh, but Rutgers, Oklahoma State definitely have some gripes with them not being in. You know, but then again, I can see why Rutgers got left out. They didn't have a good non-conference. They lost a bunch of games. In like quads three and four, Oklahoma State. I don't know what it is, um, but Purdue with with Zach Eddy, you know, and I always get his name wrong. I believe it's pronounced Eddy. Um, should take care of the whoever wins that uh, FDU Texas Southern matchup. By the way, Texas Southern really is coming into the tournament with 20 losses. But hey, we got to have we got to have we got to have conference tournaments, right? We got to have conference tournaments, right? I know, right? Memphis FAU is going to be real real fun. Memphis turned it around. You know, didn't think I didn't think too much of this Memphis team and FAU is soaring right now. Going to be a good 8-9 matchup. I'll tell you that much. But I think coming out of this one, it's probably going to be Memphis, I think. Duke Oral Roberts. Now, some people had Oral Roberts as high as like a 10 seed, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, that, that's great. But that's a 12 seed is probably where they should be, you know, just because they're taking on Duke, who won the ACC tournament. They won the tournament. They did not win... The conference, they won the tournament. And Duke is a five seed, really, you know, just kind of cements my feelings on the ACC as a whole. Why? Virginia's a four seed and not, you know, you know, somebody else like, I don't know, Miami, who actually won the ACC, you know, technically. You know, I don't really consider, oh, well, they tied at the top of the conference. No, Miami won it. I watched Miami Pitt. I watched that game. Who cares about whatever Virginia did that last day of the regular season? Who cares? Um, but honestly, this is going to be another fun 5-12 matchup, but I'm picking Duke out of here. Tennessee it should not be a 4-seed at all. Don't know why they're a 4-seed. They really shouldn't be a 4-seed. I don't know what the committee was smoking here. They shouldn't be a four seed. Definitely fraudulent. I'm picking Louisiana. I do not care if this is wrong. I'm picking Louisiana out of here. Kentucky Providence. It's Providence in Kentucky. Um, Kentucky, you know, again, kind of in a weird position. You know, they've, they've had some good moments this year. Providence as well. But I think coming out of this is going to be Kentucky. Uh, K-State, Montana State, Montana State won the Big Sky, K-State, a 3C, well-deserved where they should be. I'm picking K-State, though. USC, Michigan State. Now, the Pac-12 could have had only two teams in the field, but instead they have more than two teams in the field, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, they're taking on Izzo and Michigan State. Michigan State you know, well-deserved 7th seed because they had one of the toughest schedules in the entire country. You know, going through the Big Ten, obviously the Big Ten got eight teams in this year instead of, like, ten like the projections had, but still a tough cookie. 
uh, USC kind of snuck in the field out of nowhere, really, because I think they were the last team on the bubble that got in. One of the last teams, D-Way. And it's kind of like, okay, it is what it is. But I'm picking Izzo. And then Marquette. Oh, Marquette. Boy, Shaka Smart has them boys rolling. The Big East champs, both the regular and the conference tournament. This is not a sleeper team. This is a team that is that is going to go places. This is a team that will go places. I guarantee you that. I'm going to pick them on this side of the bracket. Now going back up to the Midwest, Houston, who really should be the last number one seed. You know, I get where people are coming from. Sure, they have a lot of wins and everything and like that, but they still got they still got destroyed by Memphis. They have a questionable loss to Temple, and they lost to the other, to the overall number one, Alabama. Sure, they have 31 wins. Sure, they won the American, the regular season title anyway. Um, but they're, you know, with the status of Marcus Sasser kind of up in the air, you know, like it was last year with Mark and Sasser, you know, both being out. Um, I still think Houston can get places, but I don't know. I'm going to take them, though, over it, over Northern Kentucky. Iowa, Auburn's going to be real intriguing. Really, really intriguing. Again, another 8-9 matchup that's just like, what What kind of, what are we getting here? I don't know. I really don't, but I'm picking Iowa here just because. Miami Drake, another 5-12 matchup that could be, you know, something. Now, again, again, I think, you know, Miami, again, they won the ACC regular season title anyway. They won the regular season title in the ACC. However, this Drake Bulldogs team is a is a real interesting one. Real, really, really interesting one. You know, the week before they beat up on Bradley in Missouri Valley title game. You know, Arch Madness was hype as usual. And really, if Bradley was here, I'd be saying the same thing. Miami, they 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 can, they have some pieces there. But I'm picking Drake here. I'm picking Drake in this region. Indiana can't state. Easy one here. Trace Jackson Davis um, and crew. Indiana is definitely going to be one interesting fight. Iowa State, the sixth seed here, another top-tier Big 12 team taking on either Mississippi State or Pitt. Pitt, again, they're unsure as to why they're in the field, but they're in the field anyway. Um, Mississippi State, too, kind of, like, I guess, I, I guess, you know, they have to put somebody up in here. They have to put somebody up here. There's only so many power five teams you can go through that can get in this field. Um, I'm not confident on either Mississippi State or Pitt, so I'm taking a oh, – we'll stay here. Xavier, a four seed. Wow. Four seed Xavier. Wow. Very nice. Definitely taking Xavier here over Kennesaw State, though. Now, this is pretty egregious, honestly. Texas a and being a seven seed. I get where people are coming from. Missouri should be a seven seed either. Um, SEC, by and large, the second best conference in the country this year. Same thing as it was last year. Um, you know, Missouri and Texas a and teams like, you know, that. They, they had some really, really intriguing wins in the SEC. Again, the SEC was definitely a tougher conference than, say, the ACC this year. So the fact that A and M is only a seventh seed is kind of it's kind of weird. And I really shouldn't be saying that about A and M because again I'm a Texas fan and I, I you see where who is paired with who in you know part of the region. 
But in any case, you have a surging Penn State team that has all the momentum. I am picking the Nittany Lions here. I do not care. And Texas should take care of Colgate this time. Surely it won't be like the last time Texas was a high seed. You know, Ephelene Christian. Remember that, y'all? Remember? In the West region, I don't know why Kansas is down here. I really don't. You can make the argument again, you can make the argument for like several other teams. I could I personally would have, you know, you know, we had you know, we factor in everything, you know, into the equation. I still think Kansas should have been one, but not number one overall. That goes to Alabama, rightfully so. Purdue would be next in line, and then Kansas. So Kansas kind of fits in perfectly. It's just where they're placed. They're placed in the West. So, and they're taking on Howard to start, you know, who hasn't been to the tournament in a long time. But that's pretty easy there. Arkansas, Illinois is probably going to be the most toss up type matchup because both these teams are weird, weird. Like, you look at some of the other eight, nine matchups, you know, and this is just a complete toss up. Like, Illinois kind of fell off. Arkansas also kind of fell off as the season progressed. But I don't know. I think we'll pick Arkansas on this part of the region now. Another 5-12 matchup that's interesting. St. Mary's, VCU. I think we know who I'm picking here. I am picking VCU here. And then UConn, Iona, Rick Patino, taking on UConn. Now, now, I'm not as high on UConn as other people might be because, I mean, it's it's a UConn team that's kind of fell off over the season. You know, they had some really good wins and stuff like that. Definitely deserved to be a four, way more than a team like Tennessee. But ultimately, I'm going to go with Patino's Iowa. We get a 12-13 matchup. Um, Arizona State, one of the last teams in the field. Nevada, safely in the field, actually. Safely in the field. Um, if you don't think that Nevada should be in, I don't know what to tell you. They're safely in. Arizona State should not be in here, though. They really should be. Probably taking on TCU. One of these teams is going to take on TCU. One of these teams is going to lose to TCU. Really good defense. Really good team. They are physical. And then you have Gonzaga, Grand Canyon. That's pretty easy right there. You can take Gonzaga all the way. And then in, let's see, Northwestern Boise State. Now, this is a toss-up type matchup here. Another 7-10 matchup that's a toss-up entirely, you know. Um I don't know how right this will be, but I'm picking Boise State here. And then UCLA will take care of that 15 seed. I think it's UNC Asheville, I think, or something like that. Now, my round of 32. Okay. So, hypothetically speaking, I am taking Houston, and I'm taking Indiana here. I'm taking... <laughs> I'm taking Iowa State and Texas. And then down here, Kansas, Arkansas. Definitely taking Kansas here. And out of this one, it's gonna be Patino taking on I taking on Kansas. Gonzaga will beat TCU with, with Timmy. And we'll set up that rematch in the Sweet 16 with UCLA. I'm not as confident on Kentucky as other people, but I'm going to take K-State here. And they're going to take on Marquette here. Louisiana Duke. That's pretty easy. It's going to be Duke and Purdue in a grind it out because, again, nobody has the size to match up against Eddie right now. Uh, and then Arizona State will take on more than likely Baylor, I think. I'm just not as confident on Creighton. I, I feel like I should be a little bit more confident on them, but I'm just not. And then Virginia will take on Alabama in this region, setting up the 
Sweet 16. So, so I needed to adjust. So, you know, coming down to it, you know, all the one seeds are going to make the Sweet 16 at least. So I'm going to have Alabama beat Virginia. Then I'm going to have Houston lose to Indiana. As for this part of the region, it's going to be scary. But I'm going to pick Texas here. Again, B12 and meet Reiner. So, if I, so if, you know, if Iowa State meets Texas a third time, it's going to be a, it's going to be another it's going to be another barn burner. Let me tell you that much. And then Baylor, Arizona. Well, this is tough. This is tough. I think I'm gonna go with Tibelis and Arizona here. You know, so we're gonna get a one-two and then a four-two. Here, it's, it's I think Duke's Rumble comes with in there. And then you have Marquette beating K-State. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with, with Gonzaga here. And then Kansas will beat Iona. So that dream run will end there. Then in the Elite Eight, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Gonzaga taking down Kansas. I'm gonna have Marquette taking down Purdue. So on a four on one side, we'll have Gonzaga, the other will have Marquette, and then Alabama, Arizona. It's gonna be Alabama. And then just just for you know, just just for shits and giggles. Definitely gonna have Indiana, you know, because Texas Texas is a team that you know can and will falter. I, I'm not. I, I'm really high on Texas, but at the same time, I've seen Texas play plenty of times throughout the season to know that they will falter at some point. So I'm, I'm just gonna be silly here and have Alabama Marquette on one side and then Indiana Gonzaga on the other side. And I think we're going to have a final of Gonzaga and Marquette. And you, you guys already know what I'm gonna pick here. <laughs> you, you, you know, y'all know what I'm gonna pick here. Right? I'm picking Gonzaga with the uh, uh, This is gonna be wrong for a third straight year. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just say this is my pick on the national champion for the third year in a row. I picked I picked Gonzaga twice for some reason, but it's it's again the East the East region feels kind of strong, but at the same time it doesn't. The West definitely an interesting one. The South region is what I'm most worried about. You know, that's why I'm worried. I was kind of hesitant to just pick Alabama to go through it. South region is definitely the toughest of the regions by far. Midwest, you know, kind of, eh. At the same time, it's also good. So I don't know. This is probably, this is probably going to get me crucified for my pick in the Discord, but it's okay. It's okay. I, I feel I, I feel like we should go to the women's side here real quick. Let me... Let me, uh... Okay. I feel like this should be a heck of a lot easier, but the women's bracket, they kind of messed it up a little bit. And hey, you'll see what I mean. And again, remember, they have just two regions, the Greenville and then the, uh, the Seattle region, so... This should be interesting. I, I, I don't think it matters too much here. 
because I, I know I think we all know who I'm picking to be the national champion, as you can see. Um, a 512 with Oklahoma and Portland. Keep in mind, I don't even know what's really happening at this point. Um, and, and it's women's college basketball, very top heavy. So, you know, the fact that I'm even doing a women's bracket as well it isn't going to be something. Get dominated here. There's that. Let's see. One side. This is pretty obvious. Uh, let's see. Stanford. Exactly here. Go here, Drake there, take that L. Oh, they got an IL on that team also. It's out of the bracket. I think we all know what this should be setting up. This should be setting up something interesting. As soon as I got the root off. Really, what I wanted to set up here is, is South Carolina, Iowa. I want to see the best two two players in the game: Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark, both National Player of the Year type guy type gals. I almost said guys. Duke it out in Dallas in the Final Four. Even though I would have wanted, I really wanted this to be the national championship right here, but instead. We're settling for a Final Four matchup between them. If we, I think we all know who's coming out of here. It'll be the Gamecocks. And then on this side of the bracket, also unsure, but in any case, not picking any major, major upsets here, except for that 12 matchup there, as you can see. Then 8 11, and then LSU, uh, Princeton, Utah, just for shits and giggles. Utah, LSU, then Florida Gulf Coast, and then Indiana, and Indiana Coast, and then it'll be Utah, and then it'll be Indiana. One side of the Final Four, then the other Seattle region, Virginia Tech, who played their way to a number one seed. I saw that game in the ACC championship in which Virginia Tech got themselves a number one seed. Uh, they, they deserved it. They deserve a number one seed for realsies. Uh, Alabama, then UConn. Matter of fact, I'm going to pick Baylor here. Then UConn, North Carolina, Val again, Tennessee, Virginia Tech, then hilariously, Tennessee, then it'll be UConn. Then it'll be, <laughs> it'll be UConn, South Carolina in the national championship, I think. Just because I'm just, I'm just, again, I. I don't, I don't, I think we all know who's winning the national title. It's South Carolina. So, there, there's my brackets. South Carolina on the women's side. Gonzaga on the men's side. Watch it be wrong, though. Watch it be wrong. 